We call that a function of the form the integral of 1 over a squared minus x squared dx could be integrated to give a sine inverse x over a, while an integral of the form 1 over x squared plus a squared could be integrated to give us 1 over tan inverse x over a. In both these formulas a is a constant such as 1, 2, 3 and x was our variable. However, what happens when our function to integrate looks similar to the above, but the x coefficient is not 1? Consider the example the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus 4x to be squared. In this case, we have something that looks similar to the integral of 1 over a squared minus x squared, but we have this 4 term in front of the x. What we need to do is take out a common factor of 4 such that we now have a 1 in front of our x squared and then apply the sine inverse rule. So in this case our integral will become the integral of 1 over root 4 into a quarter minus x squared dx. As 4 goes into a quarter 1 times and 4 by minus 1 gives us minus 4x. And now we can simplify this as root 4 gives us 2. So we have the integral of 1 over 2 by root a quarter minus x to be squared dx. And now we can bring the 2 outside the integral. So to give us a half, the integral of 1 over root a quarter minus x squared dx. And finally... A quarter is simply a half to be squared, so we can rewrite this in the form a half the integral of 1 over root a half to be squared minus x squared. Now we have the integral in the form 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. And if we integrate this using the sine inverse rule, we'd have a half into sine inverse x over a. So x over 1 over 2 plus c and tidying this up gives us a half sine inverse 2x plus c. In our next example we have the integral of 1 over 5x squared plus 3. So again we have a coefficient other than 1 in front of the x term. So again what we need to do is take out the common factor of 5. So to give us the integral of 1 over 5 into x squared plus 3 over 5. As 5 by x squared gives us 5x squared and 5 multiplied by 3 over 5 simply gives us 3. And again we can take out the factor of 5 outside the integral to get 1 over 5 the integral of x squared plus 3 over 5. Now we need the integral in the form of 1 over x squared plus a to be squared. So what we need to do is we need to transform this 3 over 5 into something to be squared. But 3 over 5 is simply equal to root 3 over root 5 to be squared. So we can rewrite the whole expression as 1 over 5 the integral of 1 over x to be squared plus root 3 over root 5 to be squared. And now if we integrate this, we would get 1 over 5 times 1 over a, or 1 over root 3 over root 5, tan inverse x over root 3 over root 5 plus c. And if we tidy this up, we have 1 over 5 into root 5 over root 3 tan inverse root 5x over root 3 plus c. And now if we multiply across by 1 over 5, we'd have 1 over 5 multiplied by root 5 over root 3 tan inverse root 5x over root 3 plus c. But 5 can simply be expressed as root 5 by root 5. 
So that means what we have is 1 over root 5 multiplied by root 5 by root 5 over root 3 tan inverse root 5 x over root 3 plus c. And now some of the root 5's cancel so we're simply left with 1 over root 5 multiplied by root 3. And root 5 multiplied by root 3 will give us root 15. So our final answer is 1 over root 15 times tan inverse root 5x over root 3 plus c.